When I first started my career as a software developer, I was very young and inexperienced and probably a little bit naive. Studying software engineering or computer science in a school setting is vastly different than when you're working as a developer on a team in an organization. When you work in a company, you have a manager you need to report to. You have, uh, you know, money's on the line in terms of product delivery. You have politics and just a lot of other stuff that school doesn't really prepare you for. These are going to be the five non-technical things that I've learned, which honestly I think is more beneficial than talking about the technical things because, you know, like, hey, I learned Git or, you know, those things are kind of a given. So number one is make sure you guys hit that like button because it definitely helps out the video in the algorithm. And um, OK, just kidding. Obviously, that's not number one, but you guys should still hit the like button. Also, if you guys do like the shirt I'm wearing, um, I do have a link to it in the description as well as other merchandise. So check, definitely check that out. But uh, let's get into the real list now. All right. Number one we have is don't be afraid to ask questions especially when you're a new employee. I know maybe some people are too shy. Uh, people are embarrassed to ask questions, but you know, no matter how much technical knowledge you have, it, it won't matter if you don't understand the domain you're in. So say you're someone who knows .NET really well and the company you're working at also uses .NET. Well, but say they're like a medical software company and you have no medical software background. So you'll still have that learning curve of, you know, learning all the all the medical jargon, all the things that you need to do to stay in, you know, certain compliance. And some companies even have their own proprietary software, which obviously you would have no knowledge of beforehand. So, you know, before you immediately start to ask these questions, uh, you know, try and figure out the problem on your own first. But don't spend two days on something that could be answered in like a five minute conversation. So that's the first thing I've learned. And it kind of goes with number two. And I'm going to try not to contradict myself here. But the second thing is don't ask the same question twice. So take me for an example. I ask a lot of questions and which I said is fine. But, uh, you know, when I first started working, I, I was I wasn't really taking any notes on certain steps that I needed to do for whatever it was. Um, but maybe a few weeks passed or a few months passed and I needed to do that same task again and I would have, you know, I forgot how to do it. So I'd have to go back and ask someone and, you know, take up their time. And, and they were probably even thinking like, you know, I just already told this guy how to do this. Why is he asking me again? And I've, I've even had that happen to me where, you know, people come up to me and ask me the same questions and it gets a little bit annoying. So what I decided to do was have just like a Word document and anytime, you know, I learned something or someone taught me how to do something, I would make sure I would write down those steps in that Word document. So if I, you know, ever needed to reference it later on, you know, I could do it. It was right there. It made things a lot faster. Um, you know, I didn't have to go bother someone else. And a lot of times they aren't available to ask you. So, um, you know, it was kind of like a game changer, but it was something that was pretty simple. So definitely uh, write things down and also make sure you guys check the documentation first. You know, a lot of times I would ask a coworker how to do something and they'd be like, did you check the documentation first? Cause it's there and I'd be like, oh yeah. And then I checked it, which, you know, I didn't need to ask them first to do that. So, uh, you know, write things down and check documentation as well. All right, so before we get into number three, I have the question of the day, which is, what is something that you've learned since getting into software development? Um, preferably something non-technical and doesn't have to be while you were working. Let me know in the comments. All right, let's get into number three, which is being uncomfortable is a good thing. You never want to be totally comfortable in a role because that means you've probably hit some kind of wall or, or plateau on, on how much you can learn in that role. You know, you're not learning anymore. You're not growing um, and you're not being challenged. And, and in my opinion, that's when work gets kind of boring. And I really feel like if if you're not, you know, taking every day as an, an opportunity to improve, uh, you're kind of just wasting your time. And, and I believe that in software and I also believe that just in life. And, and that's just my philosophy. There's always something in your skill set that can be improved. Uh, if you're a full stack developer and your back end is stronger, work on your front end. So yeah, the main takeaway is don't get comfortable. If anything, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because in tech things move fast, man. Um, you're going to get thrown into the water. You're going to get thrown into the deep end and you're going to, you know, sink or swim. Um, and you're just going to have to be able to adapt to things pretty quickly. So that's number three, which is very similar to number four. Uh, I probably could have combined these, but I do feel like they should be separate. And that is uh, not to get too complacent in your work, but also at the same time, don't move around too much. So a lot of times when you start a job, it, again, it feels like you're getting thrown into that deep end. But after a while, you know, you get the hang of it. Things become, you know, like second nature. Um, and a lot of people get complacent at that point. Um, you know, they're like, well, I've been at this job for a long time and I'm at the point where I'm, I'm getting paid the same amount and it's easier. The job's getting easier because I'm better at it. But like I said, the, the, you know, there's always something more to learn. 
learn. But and at the same time, you don't want to be moving around too much because, you know, say you're going for a new job, a recruiter is going to see your resume, and they're not really going to want to hire someone that's you know only going to be there for six months and then leave. And at the same time, you don't want to stay at the same place for too long because. With a lot of positions, you kind of get funneled into using a certain skill set, and then your other skills might get starved out, or the, or that specific skill set that you are good at might become obsolete. And now, when you're you know trying to look for a new role or you're going for a new job, there might not be much out there for you, even though you might have a lot of experience. So yeah, I feel like if you're at that position where you feel like you've learned everything you can in a role, either go for a different role or, or maybe go somewhere else, because that, that happens with every job. You know, you start out learning a lot and then that curve slowly kind of like starts to flatten out and then you're kind of just going you're just kind of just cruising along not learning much all right the last but not least thing i've learned um, is that big projects take a long time projects grow you run into technical problems that you didn't think of at the beginning or maybe you know you figure out a better way to do something in the middle of a project sometimes if you're say you're rewriting an old app um, a lot of the developers that wrote the app aren't there. There might be some shaky documentation at best or nothing at all. So there's no one to ask on how to do something. You kind of just got to figure out as you go. And I can really think of two good examples that I've had in my career where this happened. Uh, the first one was rewriting an old process that did some file-based communication and we changed it to use API-based communication. And we were planning this project to take like four weeks and it ended up taking like four months because like I said, you run into things that you don't expect. And that happens a lot with legacy code, especially with like really big apps that have been there for a long time. Um, a lot of times things go wrong. And the second time was writing a brand new app. And what happened was we had something happen called scope creep. This is when you're working on a project and you have a defined scope and then, you know, either like a developer or, or maybe someone from upper management would be like, oh, it'd be cool to have, you know, feature X as well or, or feature Y. And, and the scope kind of just keeps growing and, um, you know, nothing ends up getting delivered. Maybe like developers end up leaving, new developers get put on the project and the, the time for release uh, just keeps growing because you know people just keep adding stuff. So yeah, number five is big projects will usually take longer than you think. All right, those are the five things that I've learned working as a software developer. And honestly, I'm still learning to this day, you know, and I probably will into the future as well. Uh, they say experience is the best teacher and I've definitely been taught a lot. So yeah, hopefully you guys found the video helpful. You know, again, make sure you guys hit that like button if you guys did get a lot of value of it. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and um, keep on coding. And some companies even have their own proprietary, propri uh, why can I say that word? Proprietary Peter Piper pick the pack of pickle peppers. Saza Pachulia. <coughs> and some companies have their own proprietary. <laughs>